Thank you, Patrick. He's willing to play at your home for a fee. So, <laughs> that's beautiful. So I appreciate that. So um, I want to share with you the um, bacon and ribs night. It was very well attended, and the mayor spoke, and there was lots of food. And so thank you so much for all of you that made food or that came. It was beautiful, and so uh, thank you again. So Megan, our children's minister, has some announcements for us. Good morning. Hope you all are doing well. You have a half page that has some lovely uh, announcements. I think one new one on here is that the funeral committee is looking for some new volunteers to help. If you are interested in helping with that committee, you can let Melissa know, the church secretary, and she will get you added to the list. Um, there are still some lovely Christmas ornaments that you can purchase. Um, the Easter egg hunt will be coming soon. There's a box in the office for donations. Thank you to those that have already dropped off donations. That's greatly appreciated. And also, if you're interested in receiving the Family Lint publication, you can shark, or check the box on the attendance card. Um, I think, oh, there is coffee after um, service. So free, feel free to stay and fellowship with each other. Uh, the 20th is Marlene Shrev. I'm sorry, the birthdays is Marlene on the 20th. The 22nd is Chase Summerlin. The 23rd is Grant Keeson. The 26th is Joni Mathis. And then we have one anniversary, and that is on the 22nd, and that is Rudy and Bonnie Netzer. So happy birthday and happy anniversary. Thank you. Our sermon quote is as follows. The meaning of life is to find your gift. The purpose of life is to give it away and make the world a better place. Our biblical focus comes from Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Let us bow our heads and hearts for our choral call to worship. Thank you, choir. Our liturgy is on the inside cover of your bulletin. It's about <laughs> defining the meaning of life. I'll read the light print if you will read the dark print. Life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you respond to life. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The meaning of life is to find your gift. The purpose of life is to give it away to make the world a better place. May the Lord help me find my gifts and talents and to use them to make the world a better place. Fear in life has two meanings. Forget everything and run or face everything and rise. For the Christian, the meaning of life is to give life meaning. Our hymn of praise is to God be the glory. The words are on the screen, or you can turn in your hymn book to page 98. Let's stand together. To God be the glory. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son who yielded his life an atonement for sin and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, 
Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he hath done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer. The promise of God, the vilest defender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon received. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Great things he hath taught us, great things he hath done. And great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son, but purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. Welcome to God's house. Please turn around and wave to those around you. Welcome. As we come to the time of prayer, I'm reminded of what's going on in Ukraine and Russia along that border. And we pray for peace and we hope that diplomacy will come into play rather than war. Um, imagine if the Canadian border on America had 150 troops with tanks and missiles pointed at us and Mexico had 150,000 with tanks and missiles, and then we had submarines and ships off the coast and ready to attack us. We'd be kind of worried, wouldn't we? And uh, we would worry about our sons and daughters and going to war. And you can imagine how those folks over there feel with that exact scenario, being surrounded by three sides. So let's conti continue to ask God to intervene. I'm also very, very thankful as I know you are too, that during the Olympics we didn't have any um, people being hurt or shot or you know, violent protest. And so I'm so glad that it was peaceful uh, for the most part. Uh, we need to also keep in prayer that the um, COVID uh, cases continue to go down. They're going down and down. And so that's good, good, good. So hopefully this spring or summer will be a little bit more back to normal for us. Um, as you know, Dick Reel uh, passed away and went to be with the Lord. Uh, last week we had his funeral, so please pray for his wife Mary, uh, their family. What are some other prayer requests that we would like to share with each other today? Do you have any that you'd like to share? Okay, our prayer hymn this morning is Seek Ye First, the first verse. The words are on the screen or it's on page 405. Let's sing that as we go into our time of prayer. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be 
added unto you. Alleluia, alleluia. Our Heavenly Father, we seek you first in our lives that your kingdom may be done in our lives. And so, Lord, we come to you today with heavy hearts about what's happening on the other side of the world, the potential war that may break out and lives lost and the ugliness of hate and violence from war. And, Lord, we pray that there can be a peaceful resolution somehow. May your Holy Spirit work within the leadership of both sides to soften their hearts to go home. And so, Lord, we pray for that situation. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with us. Heavenly Father, we are thankful that the cases of COVID are going down, but we know some people are still sick, and so we pray for their healing. Pray for the doctors and nurses that you would be with them. And so, Lord, we pray that we would get back to some sense of normalcy this next year. Lord, we pray for the family of Dick Real as you've called him a home into heaven. Pray for his wife, Mary, his daughter, the grandchildren. And so be with them, Lord, in the days and weeks and months ahead. Give them your comfort and your grace. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come to your church on this Sabbath day and to worship you in spirit and in truth. Bless our time together, Lord. And we continue our time of prayer as we pray together the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and, and the, the power, power and the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. We continue our time of worship with the giving and the receiving of the Lord's tithes and our offerings. The offertory sentences. Let's honor God with our tithing. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, but whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Today I want to sing a song to you that I wrote 10 years ago, and it's a song that I wrote about life. Um, my theme of my sermon today is about bringing meaning to life, and so this particular song that I wrote, I wrote about you and me, people who are part of a family where you raise children, and the struggles that you went through, the good times that you went through. I believe that the Bible talks about Adam and Eve being the way to go. One man, one woman. I think Mary and Joseph and the parents of Jesus, another great example for us. I, I don't believe in our, in our culture today that we emphasize the goodness of family uh, like we should or as much as we should. And so when I wrote this song, I wrote it about different chapters of our lives as we raised our children and about how faith was a part of raising your children. And so this is titled Live, Laugh, and Love. Have you ever been in uh, like an artist shop and you see those signs that live, laugh, and love or faith? And so I titled it that way because I think if you've raised children, you want them to, to laugh a lot, to live life to the fullest and have a, a good time. And so this is a song I wrote um, kind of about uh, Nancy and I being together now for 38 years. And of course it was 28 then. But um, it's also your story, and I'll, I'll get to where it's your story here. The first, um, can you turn this up a little bit, the, the guitar? The first chapter is actually uh, Megan and, and where she's at with uh, young children, so I hope you enjoy it. I saw a pretty girl at a party at a beach, and our eyes met and we knew it was real. We laughed along the way, finding new things about each other and differences we saw most every day. We fell in love together, oh, would you be 
my wife She said I do and I love you For the rest of my life We went around the world together Farted free We lived, laughed, and love and harmony Two souls in love forever That's the way it ought to be A guy and a gal eternally Oh, live the life and love as a family. Oh, three kids and a dog and a cat for good measure. We both worked hard at home and the factory. Oh, life moved quickly then. Soccer games and bedtime stories. Christmas plays and dance recitals too. Oh, life grew hard as challenges met us at the door. Our faith held us together as we prayed to the Lord. We went around the world together, parted free. We lived, laughed, and love in harmony. Two souls in love forever, and that's the way it ought to be. A guy and a gal eternally. Oh, live and laugh and love as a family. Fun times along the way, birthday parties and vacations, and camping in a tent under the stars. Oh, swimming by the lake, catch a fish and a bullfrog, and after dark we'll chase some fireflies. Our children grew more quickly as the years went marching on. We cherished every moment, and then our kids were gone. We went around the world together, fun and free. We lived life in love and harmony. Two souls in love forever, that's the way it ought to be. A guy and a gal eternally. Oh, live life and love as a family. Now, for most of you in this room that have grandchildren, this is your chapter. As we look upon our lives, no regrets or second guesses. We'd do it all again if we had the chance. We're older, slower now. Life's been full. The Lord has blessed us. We love our grandkids and we watch them grow. And every day I thank the Lord giving them to me as we live and laugh and love as a family we went around the world together fun and free we lived and laughed and love and harmony two souls in love forever and that's the way it ought to be a guy and a gal eternally so live and laugh and love, live, laugh and love, live, laugh and love as a family. Amen. Let us stand together for the benediction. I mean, not the benediction. <laughs> for the doxology. Yeah. Trying to get you out here earlier, beat the Baptist to the restaurant. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Father, Heavenly Father, thank you for the light of your word. Thanks for lighting up our darkness so we can walk confidently and securely in this life. Help us to not only live by your light, but to share it with those who are in darkness. Amen. You may be seated.
but we want to watch this video. I will live my life according to these beliefs. I will live my life according to these beliefs. God does not exist. It's just foolish to think that there is an all-knowing God with a cosmic plan. That an all-powerful God brings purpose to the pain and suffering in the world is a comforting thought. However, it is only wishful thinking. People can do as they please without eternal consequences. The idea that I am deserving of hell because of sin is a lie meant to make me a slave to those in power. The more you have, the happier you will be. Our existence has no grand meaning or purpose. In a world with no God, there is freedom to be who I want to be. But with God, life is an endless cycle of guilt and shame. Without God, everything is fine. It is ridiculous to think I am lost and in need of saving. And that's how I felt before Christ opened my eyes, changed my heart, and reversed my thinking. I am lost and in need of saving. It is ridiculous to think everything is fine without God. Life is an endless cycle of guilt and shame. But with God, there is freedom to be who I want to be. In a world with no God, our existence has no grand meaning or purpose. The more you have, the happier you will be is a lie meant to make me a slave to those in power. Because of sin, I am deserving of hell. The idea that people can do as they please without eternal consequences is only wishful thinking. It is a comforting thought, however, that an all-powerful God brings purpose to the pain and suffering in the world, that there is an all-knowing God with a cosmic plan. It's foolish to think God does not exist. I will live my life according to these beliefs. Notes, but I'm going to use the word life, L-I-F-E, and then talk to you about what brings meaning to your life. If you're breathing in and out and your heart is beating, you have a life. And so what I want to do today is use the scriptures to help you understand how your life can be better in Christ. Just as that video, that individual that began to see his life with Christ change. And so just to help you if you're taking notes, the L stands for love. The I stands for involvement. The F stands for faith. And the E stands for eternal values. So life, love, involvement, faith, and eternal values. The first verse I want to share with you is a beautiful verse, the words of Jesus. is John 10.10. 10. And here's what Jesus said. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. So Jesus is saying one of the reasons I came other than dying on a cross is to give you life and to give it to the full. Not just to say, well, I'm going to meander through life and just whatever happens, happens. Jesus wants you to have the abundant Christian life. And this is a beautiful verse that has that. How is your life? Is it good? Is it meaningful? Some of you may have seen Tony Robbins. He's a self uh, motivator and has a lot of books. And, and I think he's a great guy, but one of the things that he doesn't have in any of his books is Jesus. And, and in self motivation, it's all about picking yourself up by the sh bootstraps and you know doing this or that. I, I think that's good, but so much more could be better with a life in Christ. So let's talk about love. 1 John 4.12 says this, this is love, not that we love God, but that God loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. God loved you before you ever recognized it, before you ever knew it, and he sent his son here on earth so that we would have a meaningful life and forgiveness of sins. Did each and every one of you know that you were born with certain gifts? How, how many think that Patrick has the gift of music? We do. And he's developed that 
okay? Some of you in this room in your career, you had the gift of organization. Some of you of teaching. Some of you of building. Some of you of doing many different things. And whatever those gifts are, God wants you to develop them. Why? To make the world a better place or your corner of the world. I believe that when you get to heaven, God is going to say, first of all, welcome, well done, thou good and faithful servant. But God is also going to say, you know those gifts that I gave you, those talents? What'd you do to make the world a better place? You see, oftentimes we think that we need to use those, those gifts to uh, only be used in the church. How, how many of you made a dish for um, Dick Reel's uh, funeral? Some of you did that. You made that family's life better as a result of that. Now, some of the, some of the dishes that you made, oh, they're, they're delicious and, and they're, they're great. You would not want me trying to make some of those dishes, okay? But you have those talents. You have those gifts. And so you make the world a better place. Anyone here in the, the Lions Club? Anyone here in Service League? Okay, anyone here in Kiwanis? Anyone here part of 4-H? Or, or, you know, we have all these different service leagues and you're using your gifts. You're using your talents to make Laporte a better place. And I think that's good. So my point to that is that you don't have to often say, well, I'm only going to use my gifts in the church. Um, you can use them in the community, okay? And so the first thing that I talk about is love. Love brings meaning to life. And so the true example of love is Jesus coming down and loving us and then dying on the cross. Jesus shows us love in its purest forms on the cross. That's love, folks. Love is not selfish. It is not self-centered. Love can be sacrificial, and in doing so, it becomes redemptive. And that way of unselfish, sacrificial, redemptive love changes lives. It changes the world, and it brings meaning to life. If you don't mean, believe me, just stop and imagine and think of a world where Love is the way. Imagine our homes, our families, where love is the way. Imagine neighborhoods and communities where love is the way. Imagine governments and nations where love is the way. Imagine businesses and commerce where love is the way. Imagine this tired old world where love is the way, when love is the way, unselfish, sacrificial, redemptive types of love come out to play. When love is the way, then no child would go to bed hungry in this world ever again. When love is the way, it would let justice roll down like a mighty stream and righteousness like an ever-flowing brook. When love is the way, poverty will become history. When love is the way, the earth will be a sanctuary. When love is the way, we will lay down our swords and shields down by the riverside and study war no more. When love is the way, there is plenty of good room for all God's children. Do you want to live in a world where love is the way? I do. Because if we lived in a world where love is the way, we wouldn't have the situation of Russia and Ukraine right now. Because when love is the way, we actually treat each other well, like we were actually family. When love is the way, we know that God is the source of all of us. We are brothers and sisters, children of God. That is describing a new heaven. A new earth, a new world, a new human family. This type of love brings meaning and joy to our lives. In the last five minutes, I wish I would have wrote that, but I didn't. It was the bishop from Chicago who spoke at the royal wedding of Meghan Markle and Prince Duke. It was beautiful. It was like poetry coming out as he talked about how we should be a world of love, not division and not hate. The second thing we need to have meaning in life is involvement. John 15, 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Did you catch that? God is saying he is the vine and we are the branches, okay? And so we are to produce fruit. Now, I have some fruit trees in, in my backyard, and some years, boy, the, just the fruit is everywhere, and it's really great, but some years it doesn't produce any fruit. And I'm like kicking the tree. I say, come on, get with it. What's the matter with you? I, I, I wonder if God looks at us that same way. 
how some people are producing fruit and doing great things and making the world a better place and better place and, and some folks aren't producing fruit. And I wonder if God looks down and says, come on, get busy. I gave you these gifts. I gave you these abilities. I gave you these resources to use them to make the world a better place. Folks, involvement always spells growth. Whatever you get involved in, you will grow in that particular area. And if it's giving to others, you'll grow in that way. I, I like bumper stickers. They're a lot of fun, aren't they? And we get to see them and see what, you know, some people say, eat vegan, you know. And that means they want everyone to eat healthy, you know. And you'll see, vote. So they want everyone to vote, you know. And, um, or I saw one that says, I'm against the next war. And that's the person, an activist that wants peace rather than war. I saw a, a mom and dad sticker. You remember you see those in the back of the van where it has the stick figures of mom and dad and then like four children going down, maybe a little dog and cat. You remember seeing that, you know, the family. You know, I saw one one time where there were no kids. It was just mom and dad. And beside them were big bags of money. And I thought, well, that makes sense. <laughs> if you've been a parent, you know exactly what I'm talking about. What, what if a bumper sticker, you know, was just plain white. You know, you know what that person is trying to say? I'm not involved in anything. And I want to ask you a question right now. When you walk out into that parking lot, and say, for example, I had someone put a, a white bumper sticker with nothing on it, and I gave you a magic marker, and so I'd write something that you're passionate about, that you're willing to get involved in, what would you write? What would you say? Something that would make the world a better place. Think about that. I don't have the answer for you. That's between you and God. But God wants us to be involved. We are here but just a little time, folks, compared to eternity. So while you're here this hundred years or less, do something wonderful that God can say, well done, thou good and faithful servant you know oftentimes i i preach three different services on sunday morning and i enjoy doing that and you you come and and i'm really feeding you spiritual food this this is soul food what you're getting okay you, and i'm feeding you you come here every, every week you know and and if you come here every week and you just kind of get fatter and fatter and fatter and pretty soon we just become spiritual pigs okay because we get and if we don't exercise if we don't get involved if we don't use what we've learned we're just fat spiritual pigs god wants us to use that what we've learned from our childhood about our faith to do better and make the world a better place. Have you ever heard this thought? Probably not, because I don't use it very often, but I see it every now and then. I've seen people who are Christians who are so spiritually minded that they're of no earthly good. They're so spiritually minded that they're of no earthly good. And it's maybe the individual that knows the Bible forwards and backwards, can quote verses, you know, and that type of thing, and they're the first ones to tell you you're doing wrong, but they're not getting involved and making the world a better place. They're just stuck on this God thing, getting fat like a pig and not exercising. They become so spiritually minded that they're on no earthly good. I believe God wants us to sweat a bit, amen? To get our hands dirty from time to time. The next is F, faith. Faith brings meaning to life. 1 John 5, 4 says this, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Folks, the faith brings meaning to life. Every year of your life is a different chapter. And I'll bet you that if you look at your years of life, the chapters in the book of your life, you can see how faith has been important in difficult times, in good times. Faith is important. Faith brings meaning to life. Hebrews 11.6 says this, And without faith it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he exists, and he is a rewarder of those 
who diligently seek him. God wants us to have that faith in him. I'm a theologian, and I've studied uh, most of the reformers. And one of the reformers that intrigues me is Martin Luther. Started the Lutheran church, okay, in the 1500s. And he, he actually started out as a Catholic um, theologian professor. But he had this dream that I thought was a very interesting dream. And in his dream, he dreamed that God was going to come over to his house and visit him. He was going to just knock on the front door and come. And, and so he, he went into the main room and saw that it was a mess. And it was a big mess. And there was dirty dishes around the kitchen area. And there was dirty clothes and laundry on the floor and trash everywhere. And it was just kind of a mess. And he thought, oh, no, Jesus is coming. I need to clean it. So he started to clean it up. And the more he tried to clean it up, the dirtier it got. And then he saw Jesus coming on the walkway towards the house and then heard the knock. Boom. Boom, boom. And he said, come in. And thought he was going to be so embarrassed. And the interesting thing about his dream is that when Jesus came in, everything changed. There were no dirty dishes. There was no dirty laundry. There was no, no trash around. It was as if everything was in place. What a beautiful message in that dream. Two things. First of all, what happened when he tried to clean it up? It just continued to be a mess. And in our lives, when we get into a mess and we try and clean it up ourselves rather than let God do it, sometimes it gets even messier. But when we let Jesus into our lives, into our living room, and say, Lord, my life is yours, everything gets cleaned up. Everything's good. It's a beautiful story about faith in our lives. So have a faith. The last letter is E, which is eternal values that brings meaning to your life. Matthew 6, 19 through 20 says this, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroy and where thieves do not break in or steal. You know something? We're supposed to be looking towards heaven rather than the little bit of time that we're here on earth. Store up for yourselves treasures in heaven rather than things here on earth. You know, I just bought a new car. And it's a little Honda inside. It, it, it's an electric uh, hybrid. You know, and it, it's great. And I love it. And it's good. But you know, in 15 years, that thing's going to be a rust bucket, isn't it? It's going to be a rust bucket. You know, as much as I treasure that, it's going to be a rust bucket. You know, the, the fishing boat that I, oh, I love my fishing boat. I love my fishing boat, but you know something, 15, 20 years from now, that, that thing's probably going to be in the bottom of some lake or something or a junkyard, okay? And, and so store up for yourselves treasures in heaven rather than things here on earth. That is tough for us Americans, isn't it? Right, guys, who have an extra shed because we got so much stuff? I'm there with you, I know. There was a pastor who had a member of his church that was hugely successful. He was a rancher in Texas. And the rancher said, Pastor, would you and your wife come out to uh, eat at our, eat our ranch? We're going to have steak. We're going to kill the fatted calf. Won't you come out? And so he said, yeah, fine. And so the pastor's wife went out to this huge, huge spread to this, this great big, you know, mansion of a house um, in the middle of this huge farm, and, and th th they just had the nicest china and dishes. The house is beautiful, and, and I think maybe the rancher was just showing off a little bit, you know, to the pastor, you know, how, how good God's been to me. And um, after the meal was over, the uh, rancher said, Pastor, can you, can you come outside? I want to show you some stuff. And he said, sure. And so the rancher came out, and, and he pointed towards the north, and he said, Pastor, you see all those cattle out there? And there's like thousands of cattle roaming out there. So everything to the north, I owned it all. I owned everything in that direction. And then he, he pointed over to the east and said, see all those wheat fields? As far as the eye can see, I own it all. And then he pointed to the south, and there's just hundreds of sheep roaming. This pasture says, as far as the eye can see, 
I own everything in that direction. He said, look over to the west, and there's all these cornfields, and he said, I own it all, as far as the eye can see. And the pastor was trying to think of something meaningful to say about his braggadocious <laughs> farmer. And he said, that is wonderful, and God has blessed you, but let me ask you something. How much do you own in that direction? That's the question to this verse. Store up your, for yourself in heaven. And I ask you the same question today. Because each of us could say, hey, look at my little Honda car. Look at my fishing boat. Look at, and, and, but how much do I own in that direction? How about you? How much do you own in that direction? Because we're only here for just a little bit of time compared to eternity. The last illustration I want to give you is a beautiful story of a pastor who was, who was talking to his church and, and up front, and I, I wish I would have prepared this a little bit better, but he had a, a, a little car here. And then he, he had a, a house, a toy house, you know, and then he had a toy boat and, and jewelry and, and different things. And then he pulled out of his pocket a, a, a roll of stickers, red stickers. And, and he said, this red sticker represents everything that is temporary. And he went over there and he put the red sticker on the car. He said, all your cars are temporary. You can't take them with you. And he put the red sticker on the house and he put it on the, the boat. And he reminded them that when you see a, a funeral procession, you never see the U-Haul trailer following behind. It's just. <laughs> and then he went to the jewelry and he put a red sticker on it. And he, he talked about it. everything's temporary. You can't take it with it. It's just here for a little time. And then he pulled out of his pocket this roll of blue stickers and he said this blue sticker is for what's eternal and he walked out to the audience to this person and he put a, a blue sticker on his shoulder and then another one on a little girl another one on a little boy and he said folks our relationships with people is eternal they last forever. They go with us in heaven. We'll see them in heaven. Store up for yourselves treasure in heaven. Love your neighbor as yourselves. That's the blue sticker. That's what we want to bring into heaven. Amen? That's what Jesus is asking for. If you want to have meaning in life, you L, you love. You I, you get involved. It doesn't have to be here in church. It could be with Kiwanis. It can be with a, you know, a different club or organization. Make the world a better place. You have a faith, F, that's deep, and that carries you into heaven. And then E, you concentrate on things that are eternal that you send to heaven rather than the red sticker stuff that's going to rust anyways. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this scripture that you've given us about living life to the full. And so bless us, Lord, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is uh, Let There Be Peace on Earth, uh, 431. And so in light of what's going on in the Ukraine, uh, let us uh, sing this as a prayer. Let us stand together. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me let there be peace on earth the peace that was meant to be with God our creator children all are we perfect harmony let that begin with me let this be the moment now live every step I take let this be my solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace, 
eternally. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. And now for the benediction. May the strength of God sustain us, and may the power of God preserve us, and may the hands of God protect us, and may the way of God direct us, and may God give us a handful of blue stickers to give out this week. And all God's people said, amen. God bless you all. Have a great week. Okay. <laughs>